Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you. Now, you know I like to keep it intriguing or it's just not any fun. So, I'm going to answer the question of whether or not human growth hormone leads to increased hyperplasia or hypertrophy. So, let's talk about some functions of human growth hormone. The effects of human growth hormone on the tissues of the body can generally be described as anabolic or building up and like most other protein hormones, HGH acts by interacting with a specific receptor on the surface of cells. Now let's talk about increasing height. Height growth in childhood is the best known effect of HGH action and appears to be stimulated by at least two mechanisms. HGH directly stimulates divisions and multiplication of chondrocytes of cartilage. Now these are the primary cells in the growing ends, which is the epiphyses of long bones within children, like their arms, legs, and this is hyperplasia. Now, HGH also stimulates the production of insulin-like growth factor one or IGF-1, okay? And this is a hormone homologous to pro-insulin. The liver is a major target organ of HGH for this process and the principal site of IGF-1 production. IGF-1 has growth stimulating effects on a wide variety of tissues. Now additional IGF-1 is generated within target tissues making it apparently both an endocrine and an autocrine hormone. IGF-1 will also have stimulatory effects on osteoblast and chondrocyte activity to promote bone growth. This is also hyperplasia. Let's talk about some other functions. Although height growth is the best known effect of HGH, it serves as many other metabolic functions as well. It increases calcium retention and strengthens and increases the mineralization of bone, right? It increases muscle mass through the creation of new muscle cells, which is different from hypertrophy, and this would be hyperplasia. Now, it promotes lipolysis, which results in the reduction of adipose tissue or body fat. Then it increases protein synthesis and stimulates the growth of all internal organs, excluding the brain. This would also be known as hyperplasia. It plays a role in you know, fuel homeostasis. It reduces liver uptake of glucose and effect that opposes that of insulin. Now it promotes liver gluconeogenesis, right? And I've talked about this before in other videos. It contributes to the maintenance and function of pancreatic islets and it stimulates the immune system. Now hyperplasia or hypergenesis is a general term for an increase in the number of the cells of an organ or tissue causing it to increase in size and it may be due to any number of causes including, or but not limited to, increased demand, chronic inflammatory response, hormonal dysfunctions, or neoplasia. Now hyperplasia may be harmless as a result of increased demand on a particular tissue. An example of this would be when the breast starts to lactate as a response to pregnancy, when the cells divide and increase in number in order to be prepared for breastfeeding. Hyperplasia may also be induced artificially by injecting hormones such as IGF-1 and human growth hormone. Perhaps the most interesting and you know most potent effect IGF has on the human body is the ability to cause hyperplasia, which is an actual splitting of cells. Hypertrophy is what occurs during weight training and steroid use, and it's simply just an increase in the size of muscle cells. With IGF use, one is able to cause this hyperplasia, which actually increases the number of muscle cells present in the tissue. So there you have it. That is the explanation. You can clearly see that HGH is related to hyperplasia. That being said, stay tuned for plenty more videos to come. Dylan Jamelli, signing off.